welcome to From the Mind of Christine McConnell. In today's episode, we are going to be making an authentic witch's broom. I've done this once before about four years ago, and I actually gave it away as a gift on Patreon. And I really need something special for myself, and I think I could do it even better now. So the very first step is going to be finding just the right piece of wood. I went for the very first time to a place called Ghent Wood Products, and they had just about anything you could possibly want or imagine. And I was on the lookout for something really specific. I wanted a wood that I wouldn't have to stain, that I could sculpt into whatever shape it is that I wanted, after which all I would have to do is lacquer it. And the best choice for this seemed to be something called Black Walnut. Once I had the wood home, it was now time to kind of sketch out a few different silhouettes to find something that really seemed right to me. I wanted to do something kind of unique with this, and so I always take lots of pictures on my phone from when I go on little trips, and just this last September, the captive and I went to New Orleans, and we got on one of these airboat tours where they sort of take you around through the marshlands, and while we were there, we got to see some of the cutest little critters that the swamp had to offer. So after being inspired by one of these little swamp kitties that we saw down south, I decided to carve one into the end of my broom. Okay, so now that I know what I'm going to be making, I need to draw this out on the board, and the board is extremely rough. So my very first step here is going to be sanding this smooth, so I'll actually be able to use a pencil on it. Once I had a base silhouette that I was really happy with, I could now start taking a jigsaw and go around all of those lines that I've penciled in. I should mention that black walnut is a hardwood, so it's, re it's really, really tough to get through with one of these. So I did have to work very slowly. Okay, so this piece of wood is actually already pretty thick, but I need it even thicker to pull off what I'm envisioning. So I'm going to actually double up the wood here down at the bottom where the alligator is. And this is gonna give me the ability to create something really three-dimensional. All I need to do to achieve this is to stack what I've just cut out on top of a new piece of wood, sketch that out with a pencil, and then again, take that jigsaw and cut all around it. And then from there, I'll actually just be able to glue these two pieces together. Before I glue them, I do have a couple things I needed to tackle first. And one of the first things is creating a hollow cavity in between them. And here's where we will seat the bristles that are the base of the broom. Something else I need to do is take a belt sander and actually start thinning out or tapering the end of one of these pieces, and that way I can kind of easily marry them together and there isn't gonna be obviously a really sharp cut off from one wood to the next. Just above where we carved out that area for the broom corn, I'm now carving in a little compartment that has a very special purpose. 
Four years ago, I lost my most precious familiar, Mr. Biggles. And I wanted to add an element to this broom that kind of added something a little bit more meaningful to me. And so I took a lock of his hair and a lock of my hair and I bound them together with a ribbon. I wrote him a letter containing a, a really specific wish that I have. And then I sealed it with a drop of my own blood. And then I will be enclosing this inside of the case. And with that, I will just be putting a little piece of the blanket that he passed on, as well as a twig that he used to love to play with. To really seal in this little area, I'm taking some of the sawdust that I collected, mixing it with some wood glue, and then I'm just going to go around the perimeter of that little enclosed case. And then this will just build up kind of a little bit of a wall. And then after that, I'm just going to be adding glue to the rest, sealing it down and clamping it. Once this glue fully sets, then I can start doing something called subtractive sculpting. And all that really means is instead of doing something with clay where you're obviously building something up, you are sculpting something only by removing materials and finding the shapes that you want to create in whatever sort of finite space that you have to work with. To plane away fairly large areas quickly, I'm working with a Fordham rotary tool. You can find these on Amazon. And one of the tips that I really like to use with this is something called a spherical burr. And then when it comes to doing really fine details, I just use your classic Dremel tool. Again, you can find these on Amazon. And I always use mine with a flex shaft hose attachment. And this just really kind of gives you the ability to get in really close, shift it around, and it feels more like you're working with a very large pen. So let's talk about respirators because <laughs> they've kind of been the bane of my existence as far as obviously you need them to protect your lungs, but they, <laughs> we're going to ignore that. They are pretty much terrible to wear for long durations because they hurt, they leave awful dents in your face, and they're just really uncomfortable. So I decided to splurge and I ended up getting this PAPR machine. And it was very expensive, but it's actually the cheapest of this kind of machine. And it's been unbelievable. It is very light. It's super comfortable. I've been wearing it for really like almost pretty much all day while I work on this project. And it kind of gives like a soft breeze on your face. So I don't know if you're in the market for a really great respirator, but on the off chance you are, I just wanted you to know that this is something that I found that's out there.
that a lot of the bulk has been removed, I can start getting in here and working on the fine details. And so right now I'm just gonna really focus on the back claw of this little kind of bat demon that rides the front of the broom. Working on things like hands and faces and eyes, like you really, you kind of want to pay a lot more attention and be really, I want to say just a little bit more careful. And so I usually turn down the speed of the rotary tool that I'm working on at that moment. And I'm just moving very, very slowly and cautiously because sometimes you can, <laughs> if you're moving too quickly, you can remove something that you really needed. Now let's talk about rotary tool safety. You never ever want to wear gloves when you're working with something like this. And I nearly learned the hard way a few years ago exactly why it is that you don't do that. So basically what happens is if this touches fabric, it will grab it up so fast, faster than you can even blink your eyes. And Obviously, I got really lucky here. I walked away without a scratch, but it taught me two really important lessons. The first one is don't wear any kind of like stretchy or loose clothing and make sure your hair is put away. And the second one is I will never use a rotary tool again without having a foot pedal that controls the power. And what this basically does is if something obviously terrible happens, it's a natural instinct to sort of remove your foot from something. But otherwise, you're not really thinking like, oh, I need to turn off the switch belt while, while my finger is getting eaten alive. So it's just something really kind of important to keep in mind. And I don't want to scare you, but I do kind of want you to keep in mind that, you know, these are kind of dangerous tools and there are some risks. So now that you're aware of that, let's get back to having fun. this is all really coming together, I can begin texturizing this alligator. The way I like to do this is I just pencil mark out any sort of pattern I want to create. And then once I'm really, really happy with that, then I can actually start taking that Dremel tool and start creating very fine lines around all of these pencil marks that I've made. And then once I'm really happy with that, I can go in and start gouging those even deeper to make these kind of really jump out at you. So this hasn't happened to me for a while, but this alligator head actually started to creep me out. And <laughs> for some reason, I think my like inner lizard brain was every time I had to like put my hand inside of its mouth, there was this little voice going, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> but I kept working, but it was, it's kind of a fun thing to create something that actually, you know, gives you a reaction like that. really big believer in signing and dating your work no matter how you feel about it like let's just say it's maybe not even like the thing you're most proud about it's just so incredibly helpful for people to come across later and know not only who did it but when it was created after I was done with that I used an orbital sander to smooth things out as well as several other kinds of sanders to just get into all of the nooks and crannies Okay, the handle is fully sculpted and now it's time to add some lacquer. Before doing this, I experimented with several different types. The bottom little block you see was done with linseed oil. The second middle one was done with a clear shellac. And then the top one was done with an oil-based polyurethane and a satin finish. And it was the winner by a mile. So that's the one I ended up going with. Mm -hmm. 
whenever you gloss something like this, it's always a little bit of a surprise to see like how things are gonna turn out. And I got really lucky here where there was this knot right at the top of my little bat's chest. And what it ultimately kind of made it look like was that maybe he had like a little black heart and then it just gradually gets lighter the closer you get to the tips of his wings. So while that dries, let's take a field trip to the pumpkin patch and I'm going to show you where I get my broom corn. We moved to the East Coast from California about four years ago and one of the best things I have discovered since getting here is the Cullen Pumpkin Farm. This is an amazing place. They just have everything you could want to decorate for fall. And it's just a really fun place to go and sort of get in the spirit. We spent a little time getting lost in the corn maze. And when we were done with that, I spoke to the owner, John, and set up a delivery for basically all of the pumpkins and broom corn and things that we use for decorating around fall. then picked a few pumpkins to carve just that night and then we were ready to head back to the house. later, all of the pumpkins that we ordered arrived. So broom corn is what you use to make a broom. And what you typically do with this, and it's what I did, is you remove all of the leaves and you just leave the stems. You hang them up upside down and then just let them dry out and straighten. The bushel that I'll be working with, I actually did this to last year in preparation for this specific video. When you're ready to use them, you can just take a comb and start stripping away all of those seeds and what you have left is what you'll be ready to work with. To hold these together while I work, I took a couple boards and some clamps and created this little vise that holds little sections together. I wanted this to have a bit of a staggered effect, so the way that I'm doing this is taking those layers and placing them at different heights, and then from there, I'll just begin stitching this all together into one unit. After I had woven them all together, I took a bread knife and I just started carving this end into a shape that was gonna fit inside of that alligator's mouth. Once I was feeling pretty confident, I then just did some additional sort of support stitches and then I began airbrushing it so that this would match the broom and the whole thing would just kind of cohesively go together. spent a pretty good amount of time sort of wiggling this in here and making sure that it was extremely snug. And then once I was feeling pretty confident about it, I pre-drilled several holes on the tops and the bottoms of the alligator's head. And then I took four inch long nails, hammered them in, and then took this little tiny bit and tapped in just the head so that it would be completely smooth.
And the very last thing I did was just a little touch of paint on those heads just to make it so that they didn't jump out at you. and it is completely finished, and I love how this came out. I'll actually be taking it to Salem for Halloween night this year, so I'm gonna be breaking it in. If you guys spot me, please come say hi. In the meantime, if you'd like to see an episode of how I made the costume that goes with this, just follow the link below to Patreon, and there you will find dozens of really great episodes that are super spooky and are gonna get you into the Halloween spirit. So until then, take care of yourselves, and I hope you all have a very happy Halloween.